Welcome back. It's so good seeing you because this week we are discussing 1961's The Misfits starring Marilyn Monroe and Clark Gable. Marilyn Monroe's character, Rosalind, arrives in Reno off the bus, but not to gamble, but to get a divorce from her inattentive husband. But why Reno? Well, in 19th and early 20th century America, divorce was still socially frowned upon and largely taboo. Couples who wanted a divorce had very few options, and even factors like addiction or abuse were not factors that a judge would consider. And oftentimes, the opposing spouse would set the other up to make it look as though they are committing adultery, therefore having a, quote, reason to divorce. And even once a satisfactory reason was given to a judge, couples often had to wait a year for their trial. And then even at that point, the trial itself would often make the tabloids and the trials themselves became a form of public entertainment. A few states like Utah, South Dakota, and Indiana were a bit more lenient with their policies. And so divorce mills would spring up and one half of the couple would set up residence rather quickly and split from their spouse on more lenient grounds. But those states could not hold a candle to Nevada entrepreneurial and strategic from the beginning and liberal as a matter of necessity. When Nevada became the silver state in 1864, the residency requirements to enjoy such benefit as voting and, oh, I don't know, filing a divorce suit was just six months. And this was by necessity because often boom towns in the West were transient by nature. So by 1909, Reno, the biggest little small town, had gained a reputation as a go-to state for a quickie divorce. After that, a very specific industry sprung up and lodging and entertainment proliferated within the state. Divorce tourism, as it became known, boomed. The bridge on the Truckee River, one block from the courthouse where we see Rosalind and Isabel throw her wedding ring into the river, became known as Wedding Ring Bridge. And there were even some entrepreneurial people, again, this is Nevada, who would fish the Truckee River for those gold bands. <laughs> so in 1927, the requirements were further loosened to just three months. Once the Great Depression hit, the state's legislature passed two bills that would forever change the state's fortune. First of all, gambling became legalized. And second, the residency requirements were lowered to just six weeks. Thus, the Reno Cure was born. And over the next 40 years, over 325,000 marriages would come to an end in Nevada. And the people who came to Nevada during this time all had one thing in common. They needed somewhere to stay for six weeks. In addition to residency requirements, they also needed a housing manager who would be willing to testify on their behalf that they had not left the state in the time leading up to their trial. Um, you could bunk in a boarding house, often with a roommate. You could rent a hotel room. And some women brought their kids and found quick temporary jobs like waitressing or working in one of Reno's casinos. But those who had money or a desire for adventure soon ditched their silk and pearls for cowboy boots and jeans. And yes, these women lived on what became known as divorce ranches. 
And these ranches, in addition to providing residency during a difficult time, provided psychological comfort. They fostered a community where people understood the stress of what one another was going through. Lifelong friendships were formed, and for some divorce seekers, it was a time to free themselves from the bonds of marriage once and for all. Some came with spares or men they would soon marry once their previous marriage was severed. Some would pick up a new bow along the way, as we saw in the case of Roslyn. And there's even an account of a woman turning right around and marrying her divorce attorney. <laughs> and this story is my favorite, and you'll soon see why. In 1939, Rhea Langham was a wealthy socialite with a thing for actors, married and up and coming heartthrob Clark Gable is the man she had her eyes on. She was on her fourth marriage, him his second, but though she played a major part in elevating his public profile, the union was somewhat one-sided. Uh, shortly after marrying, Gable was often seen stepping out on the town with his female co-stars, with many a dalliance swept under the rug. Well, this was too much for Rhea to bear, and while she originally planned to give Gable a long, drawn-out California divorce, alimony and all, at this time, perhaps to save face, she instead opted for a quickie split in Nevada while Gable was busy filming Gone with the Wind. In a masterful stroke, she struck a deal in exchange for six weeks left alone, she would control her own narrative. She paddled around Lake Mead, she gambled, she drank, she took in movies, she basically lived her best life, and she gave sound bites to the press every so often about Gable, and famously, she told a Nevada paper that Nevada had been, quote, the finest and shortest vacation I ever had in my life, end quote. And of course, like all good industries in the Silver State, this trend began to die out in the late 60s and early 70s. In 1970, California Governor Ronald Reagan, a divorced man himself, signed into law the nation's first no-fault divorce bill, granting couples the opportunity to split up without placing blame. Other states quickly followed suit. And while the divorce ranches have disappeared, one major side effect of this industry remains. While quickie divorces are no longer an industry for Nevada, certainly quickie marriages <laughs> are a thing. In short order, wedding chapels took over and eventually the state traded its reputation for speedy divorces for one quick fire matrimony session, oftentimes with Elvis in the building. Well, thank you again for your support, your listenership, your viewership. Go ahead and wrangle that subscribe button so you never miss anything. As always, we so enjoy bringing you new content. New episodes drop every Thursday. You never know what our YouTube channel will bring. And we just look forward to bringing you more content. Until next time, we will see you soon. Take care.